Okay. Further, what I can write? I can write that. Sir, you got a CV. Sorry. CV. This one you have written. No mass of exchange particle into. Ah, into c square. C is the speed of light. So here c is the. C square. Okay. Ah, e equals to m c square. होते ना. E equals to m c square. Right. So here m will be the mass of exchange particle into c square. C is the speed of light. Okay. So it means what I have obtained that range of any interaction will be depends upon h cross c w h cross c divided by mass of exchange particle into c square. Okay. Sir, sir, we cannot see the board. We cannot see the board. Okay, I'll write here. So any range of any interaction, what I can write? Can you see here? Yes, sir. Okay. Range of any interaction can be written as. H cross C divided by mass of exchange particle into C square. Okay. So what about the mass of exchange? Uh, what about the exchange particle for gravitational interaction? The exchange particle is graviton, and mass of graviton is how much? Zero. 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 So if you substitute zero here, then you will get range of gravitational interaction will be one by zero, something by zero that will be infinity. Okay. So please uh, be remember this formula for your competitive exam. For range of any interaction depends upon mass of exchange particle and rela relation will be like this. This is really important for your exam. So range of any interaction depends upon mass and it is inversely proportional to mass of exchange particle. Okay, is it clear? So nothing is there. This particle is creating. Uh, Graviton after time delta t is it is absorbing so range will be nothing but c into delta t and according to Heisenberg uncertainty principle when this mass is creating some particle it will lose some energy and that energy is delta e but this energy variation can be possible according to Heisenberg uncertainty principle if this energy will come back within that within a time of delta t so delta e into delta t that will be h cross. From here, I'll get delta t that will be h cross by mass of exchange particle into c square. I'll substitute it here in uh, c into delta t. Here, I'll substitute delta t. I'll get range of any interaction is inversely proportional to mass of exchange particle. Okay. Now, if you see, uh, kya samaj mein aara hai aap logo ka class mein? Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you have any problem, please inform me. Okay, we have a problem for the class. Okay. Now, if you see uh, that gravitational interaction F G is how much? This was like G M on M two by R square. Okay. But if you see that case of elementary particle, for case of elementary particle, let us take elementary particle electron. Its mass is how much? Nine into ten, nine into one into ten to the power minus thirty one kg, right? So for the case of elementary particle, the mass is very small. Mass is very small. If you take elementary particle as an electron, proton, any elementary particle, their mass is so small. And this fellow gravity uh, that this is gravitational constant. Its value is also so small. It is six point six seven into ten to the power minus eleven. Right. So, for the case of elementary particle, the gravitational force will be tends to zero. Why? This fellow is weak, and the mass of elementary particle is so small. You see, ten to the power minus thirty one. So, if you take two electron, if you see that gravitational interaction between two electron, you have to substitute mass of electron two times. Right? I mean, m e square. At this time, you can see. This factor will be going to zero. Just you can check that F G will be how much. If you see that uh, interaction between or gravitational interaction between two electron. So here, you have G. Ke jagah pe kya rakhoge aap? Six point six seven into ten to the power minus eleven, right? And then you have m e square. M e square means nine point one into ten to the power minus thirty one k square divided by r square. Now you see uh, this factor, 
10 to the power minus 11 and 10 to the power minus 62. Okay, so you can see the gravitational interaction between subatomic particle or elementary particle that will be tends to zero. Okay, so there is no role of gravitational interaction for the case of subatomic particle because for subatomic particle the mass is so small. Okay. And gravitational interaction basically depends upon product of mass. And G also so weak, that is of the order of minus 11. So that's why for elementary interaction, it is negligible, okay? But it has, a, it can explain many phenomena, like the existence of galaxy, existence of planets, solar system. Even I'm standing because of gravitational interaction. So all the macroscopic phenomena basically uh, described by gravitational interaction, but microscopic phenomena cannot be described by gravitational interaction. But when, uh, because when we'll go to microscopic phenomena or subatomic cases, for this case, mass will be negligible. So this force will be negligible. So it cannot explain anything, but macroscopic phenomena, any macroscopic phenomena, it can describe by gravitational interaction. Okay. Is it clear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay. Now we have second interaction that will be your electromagnetic interaction. Okay. So suppose you have a two charge, Q1 and Q2. They are separated by distance of R. Then Coulomb force or force due to the presence of these charges can be written as Q1, U2 by 4 pi epsilon naught R square into R cap. Right, it can be attractive, it can be repulsive depending upon the nature of charge. If both charges are similar, then there will be uh, then there will be repulsive force. But if the both charges are opposite in nature, then you will get attractive force. Okay, for this case, what will be the exchange particle for electromagnetic indirection? What will be the photon? photon. Okay, good. What about the spin of photon? The spin less one. Spin is one. okay. One so, uh, so photon is again boson. Okay. What about mass or rest mass? Zero. Rest mass is zero. But when that photon is moving, then it will have some finite mass, right? So rest mass of photon is zero, spin is one. So of course it will be boson, right? Okay. Now what about that range of this uh, electromagnetic interaction? So if you remember, we have derived that range is inversely proportional to mass of exchange particle, right? So again, that for electromagnetic interaction, exchange particle is photon and photon is actually massless. So range of, range of electromagnetic interaction, range of EM interaction will be R that will be infinity. Okay. Okay. What is the significance of electromagnetic interaction? What is the significance? So if you see for gravitational interaction, it can uh, describe macroscopic phenomena like existence of galaxy, solar system. Elementary particle interactions are described by this. Uh, yes, uh, partially it is true, but you, you see that when that electron is orbiting around that nucleus, so electronic stability of electronic orbit. Why this electronic orbit is stable? Because of Coulomb interaction, right? Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Similarly, the stability of solid, two atoms inside solid, they are interacting by Coulomb interaction. So basically, the stability of atoms, molecules, hardness property of solid, okay, softness property, electronic properties of solid, magnetic properties these are these things can be described by em interaction 
So what is the significance? So it can basically describe stability of atoms. Stability of atom molecules okay then uh, hardness property of solid hardness property of solid okay then electronic and magnetic property magnetic properties of solid okay. these are the significance of electromagnetic interaction is it clear to all Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Is there any question? Anyone? Do you have any question? Anyone? Sir, yes. Sir, as you said that uh, rest mass of the photon is zero and moving mass is some finite, then that mass is not known. That mass is not known, you are saying? So you said that that is some finite mass that, that we ah. cannot. Uh, so you know E equals to, for photon E equals to PC, right? For photon E equals to PC, right? Am I correct? Yes, sir. Uh, is it okay? okay? For a photon E equals to PC, hote na? Uh, yes, sir. And energy ko kaise likh sakte ho In terms of MC square ki form likh sakte ho, right? E goes to kya MC square hota na? Am I correct? Yes, sir. Ah, so, jab photon apka rest pe nahi hai, it will have some finite momentum, right? So, yes, energy sir. of photon can be written as PC, and energy is related to mass, right? E goes to MC square hota Ab dekho, if the momentum is non zero, you will get some non zero value of mass, right? Yes, sir. Are you asking this or something else? This only, sir. Hmm? Yes. Here, electronic orbit is stable now. Ah, yes. Due to Coulombic interaction. Ah, you see. Ah, stability can be described by uh, Coulombic interaction because when you see, when you have electron, it is revolving, right? So it will have two force. On will be this side that will be mv square by r, right? And this is balanced by Coulomb attraction, right? If there is no Coulomb attraction, then this stability will not be possible. Is it possible? Yes, sir. You have sir, any question? What, what does range imply here? What does range describe? Sorry? What does range uh, mean here? रेंज का मतलब ये है कि सपोज मान लो एक आपका चार्ज यहां पे है और दूसरा आपका इंफिनिटी पे भी है तो इनके बीच में भी आपका कूलम इंटरेक्शन काम करेगा मतलब मिनिमम डिस्टेंस कितना आ, मतलब क्या है कि दो चार्ज को अगर इंफिनिटी इंफिनिटी डिस्टेंस तक भी रखोगे ना तो तब भी आपका कूलम इंटरेक्शन काम करेगा इसके नीचे कोई भी डिस्टेंस में भी तो कम करेगा इफ यू कीप दिस टू चार्जेस अप टू इंफिनिट डिस्टेंस then also Coulomb interaction can work. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Just now sir, I did. Ah, yes. Sir, you explain exchange particle. Kya hota hai? Explain kar ah, just I'm giving you example. Like I am talking with you by exchange of? By exchange of words. Some words. So whenever there will be some interaction between particles, there must be some exchange. Jahan pe bhi interaction hoga, there must be some exchange, otherwise there, there will be no, no interaction. Okay, just simplest example I am giving you, I am interacting with you by the exchange of some words. 
So whenever there will be some interaction, there must be some exchange. Okay. Okay. And you may ask me why this photon is uh, exchange particle here, these things. But this thing I'll explain when I'll go to the conservation laws. That time I, I'll explain these things because this is all about related to conservation of angular momentum. Okay, next thing that we are going to discuss, next interaction that is strong interaction. Okay. So, as you know, inside nucleus, you have neutrons and protons. They are bound together. Okay. As you know, inside nucleus, you have protons as well as neutrons. And they are at, uh, they are at a distance of how much? Kitna distance pe hote? Do, ye do nucleus. Femtometer mein, na? So, when two nucleons, when two nucleons, nuclear number one and nuclear number two, N2, inside nucleus, you have two nucleons, N1 and N2. They are inside, uh, they are actually inside the nucleus. So they are basically interacting by the exchange of what? Anyone? So as you know, there is an interaction. Ions. Uh, there is an interaction between nucleons inside the inter, uh, inside the nucleus. Let, nutri nutri let me let me uh, uh, let me say something. This uh, is nucleus. Hai. Nucleus stable, hai na? Is nucleus stable? Yes, sir. Uh, nucleus stable hota hai up to 300 nuclei ke liye stable. Hai. Nuclei is stable hai, kyu hai? Kyunki nucleus ka andar do, do force hai. Ek to aapka kya hai? Coulomb force hai. Due to the presence of protons, protons, photons ke beech mein kya hai? Coulomb force kaam kar raha hai, hai na? Yes, but, but still nucleus is stable, why? Because there is another force exists inside that nucleus and this force is nuclear force and nuclear force is attractive in nature and strength of nuclear force is very much large as com compared to Coulomb force. So nucleus may do force come to the Hamesa, a Coulombic force, your proton proton ke beach me hote, oh, uh, basically repulsive hota hai. But there is ex there exists another force that is your strong interaction. Okay, strong interaction, and that is your nuclear force. Okay, and strength of nuclear force is very much large as compared to Coulomb force. Also, the nuclear force actually independent on charge. Charge ke upar, charge ke bich mein, uh, charge ke upar depend nahi hota. Jis aapka two nucleon se, N1 and N2, they are attracting with each other by the exchange of pi meson. By the exchange of pi meson. What is the spin of pi meson? Spin is how much? Zero. Nahi, zero hota hai. So, meson is basically, pi actually pseudo meson and for pseudo meson, spin is zero. So two nucleons inside the nucleus, they are interacting by the exchange of pi meson and spin of pi meson is zero. Rest mass of pi meson is on 40 mega electron volt per C square. Okay. So, so like suppose I'm giving you example, aapka ek neutron hai inside nucleus. It is interacting with another neutron by the exchange of what? Here, pi zero. There are basically three type of my, pi meson. There are basically three type of pi meson. You have pi zero, pi plus, pi meson. So when neutron on neutron is interacting with another neutron inside the nucleus, there will be exchange of what? Pi zero meson. Is ko reaction mein kaise dikhaoge? On neutron is interacting with another neutron by the exchange of pi zero. Okay. Similarly, if on neutron is interacting with on proton inside the nucleus, there will be exchange of hot air. Kya exchange hoga yaha pe? Jaise do neutron hai, 
इनके बीच हाँ इनके बीच में अगर इंटरेक्शन है पाई जीरो क्या होगा एक्सचेंज पार्टिकल यहाँ पे क्या होगा पाई माइनस बिकॉज चार्ज शुड बी कंजर्व इन एनी इंटरेक्शन राइट तो इसको इंटरेक्शन नहीं है इसको रिएक्शन के फॉर्म में कैसे लिखोगे लाइक दिस एन पी प्लस पाई माइनस वाई इट इज पाई माइनस बिकॉज चार्ज शुड बी कंजर्व हेयर इट इज न्यूट्रल राइट सो फॉर प्रोटोन चार्ज इज प्लस ऑन इट शुड बी माइनस ऑन टू न्यूट्रलाइज ओके देन यू हैव अनदर इंटरेक्शन लाइक प्रोटोन इंटरेक्टिंग विथ न्यूट्रॉन हेयर एक्सचेंज पार्टिकल विल बी हॉट Yeah, it will be pi plus. इसको कैसे लिखोगे प्रोटोन इंटरेक्टिंग विथ न्यूट्रॉन बाय द एक्सचेंज ऑफ पाइ प्लस ओके यू कैन राइट लाइक प्रोटोन इंटरेक्टिंग विथ अनदर प्रोटोन इन साइड द न्यूक्लियस बाय द एक्सचेंज ऑफ पाई जीरो ओके एंड हेयर इंटरेक्शन कैन बी पी डिकेस टू पी प्लस पाई जीरो ठीक है so you can see here that nuclear uh, strong interaction basically independent on charge so neutron neutron ke beech mein bhi kaam kar sakta hai neutron proton ke beech mein bhi kaam kar sakte hai proton proton ke sorry proton neutron ke beech mein bhi kaam kar sakte hai proton proton ke beech mein bhi kaam kar sakta hai and strong interaction is always attractive in nature and it is it is actually strongest force in nature actually okay so what will be the range of this interaction now kitna range hoga so ek cheez aap likh sakte ho yahan pe ki strong jo strong interaction hota hai basically it is independent on charge it is basically independent on charge theek hai sir nuclear force is strong इट इज एक्चुअली स्ट्रॉन्गेस्ट फोर्स स्ट्रॉन्ग मतलब इसका जो स्ट्रेंथ होता है सबसे ज्यादा होता है चार फोर्स है ना आपके पास ग्रेविटेशनल है देन यू हैव इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक इंटरेक्शन देन स्ट्रॉन्ग इंटरेक्शन देन यू हैव वीक इंटरेक्शन सबसे स्ट्रेंथ किसका ज्यादा होता है स्ट्रॉन्ग इंटरेक्शन का है ना जैसे आपका न्यूक्लियस न्यूक्लियस क्यू स्टेबल है न्यूक्लियस में तो एक आपका इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक फोर्स भी है कुलम फोर्स दैट इज रिपल्सिव बट वहां पे कुलम फोर्स डोमिनेंट नहीं है डोमिनेंट कौन है आपका स्ट्रॉन्ग इंटरेक्शन और न्यूक्लियर फोर्स ओके एंड दैट स्ट्रॉन्ग इंटरेक्शन और न्यूक्लियर फोर्स इज इंडिपेंडेंट ऑन चार्ज इट कैन एक्ट बिटवीन टू प्रोटॉन्स और बिटवीन टू न्यूट्रॉन्स बिटवीन प्रोटॉन न्यूट्रॉन ओके लाइक दैट सो इट इज इंडिपेंडेंट ऑन चार्ज दैट साइड न्यूक्लियस इज स्टेबल ठीक है सो हट अबाउट रेंज हाउ मच विल बी द रेंज तो इफ यू सी दैट रेंज का फॉर्मूला क्या लिखा था मैंने कितना हो जाएगा एच क्रॉस सी का वैल्यू कितना होता है एनी वन एच क्रॉस सी का वैल्यू होता है ऑन नाइनटी सेवन मेगा इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट फेमटोमीटर एंड मास ऑफ एक्सचेंज पार्टिकल इज हाउ मच हेयर पाई मेजोन ठीक है ना तो पाई का पाई का तीन टाइप का मेजोन है पाई जीरो पाई प्लस पाई माइनस तीनों का मास जो होता है सेम होता है पाई प्लस का भी ऑन फोर्टी होता है पाई जीरो का भी ऑन फोर्टी होता है पाई माइनस का भी ऑन फोर्टी होता है सो इफ यू टेक दिस मास तो इट विल बी ऑन फोर्टी मेगा इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट पर सी स्क्वायर एंड यू हैव टू मल्टीप्लाइड बाई सी स्क्र ऑल्सो बिकॉज यू हैव सी स्क्र हेयर दिस विल बी कैंसिल्ड Mega electron volt will be cancelled, so you'll have a unit that is femtometer. If you calculate it, you will get range of nuclear force will be around 1.4 femtometer. Its meaning is what? Range of nuclear force is 1.4 femtometer. What is the meaning of this? Short range force. This nucleus will work. Yes. Any anyone? और कोई अच्छे से अच्छे से डिस्क्राइब कर सकते हो द रेंज ऑफ न्यूक्लियर फोर्स इज ऑन पॉइंट फोर फेमटोमीटर व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस वेरी शॉर्ट रेंज फोर्स हां इसका मतलब ये है कि सपोज मान लो दो न्यूक्लियन है एन1 एंड एन2 डिस्टेंस इज इनका डिस्टेंस अगर ऑन पॉइंट फोर फेमटोमीटर से ज्यादा हो गया सो देन इट विल नॉट वर्क देन न्यूक्लियर फोर्स विल नॉट वर्क 
मतलब मैक्सिमम डिस्टेंस दो न्यूक्लियर के बीच में कितना होना चाहिए 1.4 क्या कोई मिनिमम डिस्टेंस भी है न्यूक्लियर फोर्स का न्यूक्लियर फोर्स हो जाता है ना Exactly. So, ये फोर्स एक तो आपका 1.4 फेमटोमीटर के आसपास होना चाहिए मतलब इतना मैक्सिमम दो दो न्यूक्लियर दो न्यूक्लियर को इतना मैक्सिमम डिस्टेंस तक रखोगे तो आपका न्यूक्लियर फोर्स काम करेगा इसके बाहर रखोगे तो काम नहीं करेगा अच्छा दो न्यूक्लियर के बीच में अगर डिस्टेंस आपका दो न्यूक्लियर के बीच में अगर डिस्टेंस आपका पॉइंट फेमटोमीटर हो गया ना तब भी ये काम नहीं करेगा तब आपका ये फोर्स क्या हो जाएगा रिपल्सिव हो जाएगा सो so, दो न्यूक्लियस जो अगर स्ट्रॉन्ग इंटरेक्शन और न्यूक्लियर फोर्स अगर देखोगे तो दो न्यूक्लियर के बीच में डिस्टेंस कितना होना पड़ेगा इन बिटवीन ग्रेटर देन पॉइंट सेवन फेमटोमीटर और बेसिकली अराउंड टू फेमटोमीटर ये तो कैलकुलेशन से कितना आया आपका वन पॉइंट फोर फेमटोमीटर बट एक्चुअली जो रेंज होता है वो तो किस किस रेंज में होता है दो न्यूक्लियर को आपको किस रेंज किस डिस्टेंस में रखना पड़ेगा ग्रेटर देन पॉइंट सेवन फेमटोमीटर और लेस देन टू फेमटोमीटर ओके okay. उसके बाहर रखोगे तो वो काम नहीं करेगा सर जीरो पॉइंट सेवन इज फॉर ओनली न्यूक्लियन सर इज इट फॉर न्यूक्लियर एंड प्रोटोन सॉरी जीरो पॉइंट सेवन सेंटीमीटर इज फॉर ओनली इज ओनली फॉर न्यूक्लियर इंट्रैक्शन और इज इट फॉर न्यूक्लियर एंड प्रोटोन इंट्रैक्शन आल्सो हाँ इट इज बिटवीन दी जीरो पॉइंट सेवन सेंटीमीटर This is the distance between any two nucleon, like neutron, neutron, or neutron, proton, 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 like this. Are you asking this or something else? Uh, yes, sir. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So th there is a strong interaction between nucleon, nucleon also. Or कहाँ पे दिखा जाता है strong interaction? Anyone? Or कहाँ पे दिखा जाता है? So when you have a quark, you know proton is made up of quark, right? Proton, any hadrons is basically made up of quark, right? So when two quark basically, when two quark basically interacting, they are interacting by the exchange of gluon, and this type of interaction is also strong interaction. Okay, so interaction between nucleon nucleon. This is also strong interaction. Also, hadrons are basically made up of quark, and quark are basically interacting by the exchange of gluon. This is also is a kind of strong interaction. Okay, this thing I'll discuss when I'll go to that quark model. Okay, but I am giving that example. Okay, so what is the significance of strong interaction? Significance. Is the nucleus stable? इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ चार्जेस सिग्निफिकेंस क्या है इट कैन डिस्क्राइब इट कैन डिस्क्राइब द स्टेबिलिटी द स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ न्यूक्लियस एंड hadrons because hadrons basically they are basically made up of quark and they are st highly stable because inside within the quark there is exchange of gluon and this interaction is again strong interaction so strong inter uh, strong interaction can describe the stability of nucleus as well as stability of hadrons next kind of interaction you have that is weak interaction so weak interaction can basically describe two phenomena interesting phenomena in nature first of all it can describe the beta decay also it can describe nuclear nuclear fusion okay so you know in nuclear beta decay what used to happen 
a neutron decays to proton with the help of electron and anti neutrino this is your beta decay okay so this beta decay phenomena that can be described by weak interaction not only this you have a nuclear fusion so suppose one proton is interacting with another proton and it is giving you on h2 plus electron plus plus neutrino so you know sir niche ka board visible nahi hai so you have a proton and one proton is interacting with another proton and it is giving neutron plus positron plus neutron so you know these things right in nuclear fusion two lighter element combine and it give you, give you some heavy element so basically in in any interaction if in any interaction if there is a change in quark if there is a change in quark happens that that thing basically described by weak interaction you can see neutron is made up of what this neutron is made up of three quark that i'll discuss these things it will have three quark up down down and it is converting to proton proton have to has three quark up up down so you can see basically what is happening on down quark is basically converting to up quark so if there is any change in quark in any interaction is happening that thing basically will describe by weak interaction okay and if you see the term look like weak interaction means it is the weakest force in nature but this is not true the weakest force in nature is what kaun sa force sabse zyada weak hota hai gravitational gravitational so it is very much strong as compared to gravitational interaction okay here the exchange particle is what in weak interaction exchange particle kya hota hai in exchange uh, in weak interaction you have exchange particle यहाँ पे एक्सचेंज पार्टिकल होता है डब्लू प्लस माइनस बोजोन डब्लू प्लस बोजोन एज वेल एज डब्लू माइनस बोजोन ऑल्सो यू हैव जेड जीरो बोजोन सो बेसिकली थ्री टाइप ऑफ एक्सचेंज पार्टिकल एग्जिस्ट इन वीक इंटरेक्शन डब्लू प्लस डब्लू माइनस जेड जीरो एंड स्पीन ऑफ डब्लू प्लस डब्लू माइनस बोथ हैव स्पीन दैट इज ऑन एज वेल एज the spin of z0 boson again spin is on what about their mass mass of w plus minus w plus minus likh raha hu iska matlab do particle hai w plus bhi hai w minus bhi hai inka jo mass hota hai basically it will be 80.35 giga electron volt per c square and you have Z boson or Z zero boson, its mass is its mass is around ninety one point eight seven giga electron volt per c square. Okay. So if the mass is of the order of giga electron volt, then what will be the range? So if you remember, I am giving you hints. For mega, it was ten to the power minus fifteen. Exactly. So if you remember, minus eighteen. Exactly. You are correct. Punit, you are absolutely correct. So if you see for strong interaction, you have mass. Mass of exchange particle. Which order? Me the. Apka mega electron volt. Man, right? For strong interaction, that exchange particle was pi meson, and it has mass that is of the order of mega electron volt. Apko kya mila tha range? रेंज वॉज ऑफ द ऑर्डर ऑफ टेन की पावर माइनस फिफ्टीन मीटर अब आपके पास एक्सचेंज पार्टिकल है जिसका मास ऑफ द ऑर्डर ऑफ गीगा इलेक्ट्रॉन बोल्ड तो आपको किस रेंज में मिलेगा रेंज इसका कौन सा ऑर्डर में मिलेगा इसका रेंज सो इफ यू रिमेम्बर दैट 
रेंज इज इनवर्सली प्रोफेशनल टू मास ऑफ एक्सचेंज पार्टिकल दैट यू नो जब आपके पास मेगा इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट है आपको क्या मिल रहा है टेन की पावर माइनस फिफ्टीन मीटर में मिल रहा है अब आपके पास गीगा इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट है तो किस ऑर्डर में मिलना चाहिए नीचे नीचे आपको क्या आ जाएगा और टेन की पावर थ्री नीचे आ जाएगा राइट क्योंकि गीगा इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट इज नथिंग बट टेन की पावर थ्री मेगा इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट राइट और यू कैन राइट ऑन गीगा इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट को क्या लिख सकते हो आप टेन की पावर थ्री इंटू मेगा इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट राइट यस सर आई कैन राइट लाइक दिस ठीक है ना तो जब आपका मास गीगा इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट में आएगा तो आप क्या लिख सकते हो वहां पे टेन की पावर थ्री इंटू मेगा इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट एंड मेगा इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट किस मास के ऑर्डर में किसका ऑर्डर मास होता है आपका न्यूक्लियर फोर्स का होता है और उस जब आपका मास मेगा इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट में है तब रेंज कितना मिलता था आपको टेन की पावर माइनस फिफ्टीन मिलता था ठीक है ना तो जब आपका एक्सचेंज पार्टिकल डब्ल्यू प्लस माइनस और जेड बोजोन होगा वहां पे आपका रेंज क्या मिलेगा जस्ट यू कैलकुलेट यूल गेट दैट रेंज ऑफ द ऑर्डर ऑफ टेन की पावर माइनस एटीन मीटर जस्ट यू हैव टू यूज दिस फॉर्मूला रेंज इज इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल टू मास ऑफ एक्सचेंज पार्टिकल okay so you understood all this uh, four interaction first gravitational interaction it can describe all macroscopic phenomena then you have em interaction it can describe uh, stability of atom nuclear uh, then stability of molecule solid hardness properties then strong interaction it can describe stability of nucleus and stability of hadrons weak interaction it can describe beta decay and nuclear fusion right and we have also calculated their range now let me summarize summary of interaction okay summary of interaction so first you have what interaction you have interaction then exchange particle particle then you have a range and let us calculate range in meter okay then you have relative strength relative strength and finally time scale time scale that will be in second okay so first interaction is you have that is let us take which one i'll take first interaction strong ah okay. uh, let us take one by one strong then i'll take em interaction then gravitational and then you have weak okay so strong interaction ke liye exchange particle kya kya hai batao aap log batao ion ion Uh, it will be pi plus pi zero pi minus and also you have two right in em you have em interaction me kya hota hai photon gamma gravitational me graviton and weak me kitna kya hota hai w plus plus minus and w minus and z zero okay range what about the range strong ka range kitna hota hai 10 की पावर माइनस फिफ्टीन मीटर में राइट सो यूनिट आई है रिटर्न दैट इज मीटर ई एम का कितना होता है इनफाइनाइट ग्रेविटेशनल का इनफाइनाइट वीक के लिए 10 की पावर माइनस एटीन मीटर रिलेटिव स्ट्रेंथ व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ रिलेटिव स्ट्रेंथ लाइक विद रिस्पेक्ट टू वन फोर्स यस सो इफ आई टेक द रिलेटिव स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ स्ट्रॉन्ग इज ऑन i am exam giving example if i take strength of strong interaction is on then strength of em interaction will become 10 to the power minus 3 okay then strength of 
gravitational interaction will become 10 to the power minus 40. And then strength of weak interaction will become 10 to the power minus 13. Okay. So it's a relative. Agar apka strong ka strength on hai, EM ka kitna ho jayega? Minus 3 ho jayega. Then gravitational ka kitna ho jayega? Minus 40 ho jayega. Weak ka kitna ho jayega? 10 to the power minus 13. So you can see weak interaction, weak interaction is very much strong as compared to gravitational interaction because you see their strength. Now, what about time scale? What about time scale? Time scale of strong interaction is 10 to the power minus 23 second. For EM, it will be 10 to the power minus 20 second. For gravitational, it will be 10 to the power 16 second. And for weak, it will be 10 to the power minus 10 second. So this is the summary of all interaction. Strong interaction ke liye time scale kya hai? 10 to the power minus 23 second hai. EM ke liye 10 to the power minus 20 second hai. Gravitational ke liye 10 to the power 16 second hai. Weak ke liye 10 to the power minus 10 second hai. So this is the summary of all interaction. All fundamental force has different, different significance, okay? So that we have discussed. Sir, if you have any question, sir, time scale ka matlab ko ho hua? Yeah, so, yes, you have a question? Sir, time scale ka matlab kya hua? Exactly. So the, uh, very good question actually. What is the meaning of time scale? Anyone has any answer here? Anyone has any the answer? time taken for the interaction. Uh, what is the meaning of this? Sir, keep minimum time just my energy wapas, uh, delta e energy to loss with you wapas, wapas Okay, let me give a few examples. Yes, you have more answer. Sir, jitna time me wo jo exchange particle hai, wo exist kar sakta hai. Jitna time me wo exchange particle hai? Ex exist kar sakta hai, uske baad. Achha. Destroy. Achha, wo to continuously change hota rahe rahe. Nahi, wo nahi, wo time, delta t time nahi scale nahi hai pe. Delta T okay. time scale नहीं है. जैसे range के लिए range का क्या definition बोला था? हम हम लोगों ने क्या discuss किया था range के बारे में? कि दो particle को आपको उस distance तक ही रखना है, तभी वो force क्या करेगा? काम करेगा, right? Range के लिए जैसे आपका 10 के power minus 15 meter strong के लिए हम लोगों ने discuss किया. इसका मतलब क्या है? कि दो nucleon को अगर उस range में रखोगे, 10 के power minus 14 meter में रखोगे तो तो काम नहीं करेगा, right? मतलब उस distance के अंदर ही आपको रखना है. तभी स्ट्रांग मतलब कोई भी इंटरेक्शन काम करेगा तो यहां पे टाइम स्केल का मतलब क्या है ये अच्छे से समझो मैं कुछ एक, आपको एग्जांपल देता हूं फिर आपको क्लियर हो जाएगा जैसे सपोज मान लो आपके पास एक अनस्टेबल हाइड्रोन है अनस्टेबल हाइड्रोन ठीक है ये बड़ा इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन है और हर स्टूडेंट का कंफ्यूज होता है यहां पे सपोज मान लो आपके पास एक अनस्टेबल हाइड्रोन है x इफ दिस इज डिकेइंग to another two particle y and z you have a unstable hadron it is decaying to another two particle agar ye decay process agar ye decay process agar strong hai agar ye decay process strong hai to iska jo lifetime hoga iska jo lifetime hoga wo aapka 10 ki power minus 3 sec 23 second hoga सपोज मान लो एक डीके प्रोसेस है आपके पास एक हाइड्रोन है ये डीके हो रहा है y एंड z में ठीक है तो अगर ये डीके प्रोसेस स्ट्रांग है तो इसका लाइफ टाइम क्या क्या है कितना होगा 10 की पावर माइनस 23 सेकंड होगा अगर सपोज मान लो आपका एक एग्जांपल देता हूं रियलिटी में सपोज मान लो पाई 0 का डीके होता है सॉरी पाई पाई माइनस डीकेइंग टू म्यू माइनस प्लस एंटी न्यूट्रिन ठीक है तो ये डीके प्रोसेस कौन सा प्रोसेस है एनीवन व्हिच व्हाट टाइप ऑफ प्रोसेस इट इज एक्चुअली सो दिस इज अ वीक प्रोसेस वीक इंटरेक्शन तो यहां पे आपका एक पाई माइनस डीकेइंग टू म्यू माइनस प्लस एंटी न्यूट्रिन एंड दिस this is decaying by weak interaction. So, here, its lifetime will be. In which order should it be? 
इंटरक्शन We'll discuss every interaction. Why it is EM? Why it is weak? Why it is strong? But this decay process is actually EM interaction. So here, pe pi zero ka lifetime kitna hoga? Ten to power minus twenty. Ten to power minus twenty second hoga. So time scale ko is way mein samjhte hain particle physicist. ठीक है. कभी कभी इस way mein bhi bolte hain. मैं थोड़ा आपको example देता हूँ, है ना? Confuse मत होना. कोई भी डीके प्रोसेस लेके उसको जज करो कि अगर कोई डीके प्रोसेस आपका स्ट्रॉन्ग में हो रहा है तो जो अनस्टेबल पार्टिकल है उसका लाइफ टाइम कितना होगा टेन की पॉवर माइस ट्वेंटी थ्री होगा अगर कोई डीके प्रोसेस वीक में हो रहा है तो अनस्टेबल पार्टिकल का लाइफ टाइम टेन की पॉवर माइस टेन होगा अगर कोई डीके प्रोसेस आपका ई में हो रहा है तो वहां पर लाइफ टाइम कितना होगा टेन की पॉवर माइस ट्वेंटी सेकेंड होगा ओके लाइक दैट इस वे में भी बोलते हैं पार्टिकल फिजिसिस्ट की सपोज मान लो आपके पास दो पार्टिकल है दो न्यूक्लियन है ए एन बी ठीक है कंफ्यूज मत होना ये सारे फिलोजोफी फिलोजोफिकल ऑर्ड है कि दो न्यूक्लियन है आपके पास दोनों फेमटोमीटर ऑर्डर में है ठीक है तो ये दोनों न्यूक्लियन को स्ट्रॉन्ग इंटरेक्शन फील करने के लिए फेमटोमीटर डिस्टेंस में एटलीस्ट टेन की पावर माइनस ट्वेंटी थ्री टेन की पावर माइनस ट्वेंटी थ्री सेकेंड इसको स्पेंड करना पड़ेगा तभी ये फील कर पाएगा स्ट्रॉन्ग इंटरेक्शन दो न्यूक्लियन है फेमटोमीटर ऑर्डर में है तो अगर इनको स्ट्रॉन्ग इंटरेक्शन फील करना है तो एटलीस्ट दे हैव टू स्पेंड टेन की पावर माइनस ट्वेंटी थ्री सेकेंड टू फील दिस स्ट्रॉन्ग इंटरेक्शन ओके इज इट क्लियर हॉट एम सर तो क्लियर हो गया लाइफ टाइम का जैसे मान लीजिए हम ये पाई मेजोन की बात कर रहे थे ईएम इंटरेक्शन वाला तो इसमें मतलब इसका टाइम ऑफ एग्जिस्टेंस टेन डेज पर माइनस ट्वेंटी होना चाहिए एग्जैक्टली exactly. अगर एम में है तो ओके okay, सर ठीक है तो कोई भी डीके प्रोसेस स्ट्रॉन्ग में होगा तो वो लाइफ टाइम डिसाइड करेगा ना कि डीके प्रोसेस कौन सा मोड में हो रहा है स्ट्रॉन्ग में हो रहा है एम में हो रहा है वीक में हो रहा है लाइफ टाइम उसी सब से आएगा ठीक है ओके so this is all about your yes, interaction so if you have understood let uh, let us solve few problem okay first problem that we are going to discuss suppose man lo aapke paas do nucleon hai a non time kitna ho aap logo ka abhi time hai 8:30 so sare 8:30 baje tak hai na class chalo ek ek yes, problem sir. so you have two nucleon a non and n2 okay so they are interacting by strong interaction by the exchange of pi meson its mass is given that is 140 mega electron volt per c square okay and range for when they are exchanging that pi meson this time range of this interaction is given that is 1.4 femtometer so you have two nucleon n1 and n2 they are exchanging pi meson having mass 140 mega electron volt per c square this time the range of interaction Or range of strong interaction that is 1.4 femtometer. Now they are exchanging. Now they are exchanging rho meson, having mass of this rho meson that is given 770 mega electron volt per c square. So what will be the range of interaction now? कितना हो जाएगा बताओ? ठीक है ना? तो so, जब आपके पास पाई uh, मेजोन का एक्सचेंज हो रहा है रेंज कितना है एंड मास ऑफ पाई मेजोन इज गिवन सॉरी इंटरेक्शन विल बी mass of pi particle let us take this is your equation number 1 when they are exchanging rho meson 25 cm ha 1 2 1 2 5 cm exactly so when they are exchanging rho meson the mass will be m rho let us take this is equation number 
So if you divide equation two by one, so how much you'll get? R rho by R pi, that will be equals to M pi by M rho, okay? So it means R rho will be how much? It will be R pi into M pi divided by M rho, right? It means R rho will be, R pi kitna hai? 1.4 hai, then you have mass of pi that is 140, then you have mass of rho that is 770. Okay, if you substitute, you'll get 0 0.25 femtometer. Is it clear? Is it clear to all? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, one small question. Suppose you have a two proton. Suppose you have a two proton. They are separated by distance of 10 nanometer. Okay, two proton, they are separated by distance of 10 nanometer. The Coulombic force between these two proton that is acting, let us say this is Fc. And nuclear force acting between these two proton will be Fn. Two proton, they are separated by distance of 10 nanometer. Coulombic force between them is Fc. And nuclear force between them that is Fn. Ponsa bada hoga? Nuclear force. Nuclear force. No, sir. Uh, sir, nanometer, may right? Yes. So, sir, Coulomb force, bada hoga. nuclear force working. Exactly. You see, when they are at distance of 10 nanometer, then nuclear force will not work because nuclear force can only work when the distance is 10 to the power minus 15 meter, right? So, here nuclear force cannot work. So, here basically Coulomb force is greater than nuclear force. Okay, is it clear? Because now nuclear force will not work because distance is now 10 to the power minus nine meter, right? So uh, yes, nuclear force can only work when that uh, distance is 10 to the power minus 15 meter, okay? So nuclear force will not work. So you can write Fc greater than Fn. Okay, another homework I'm giving, okay? Just do this homework. So suppose you have a electron and you have a positron. Okay, they are they are separated by distance of r. So what you have to calculate? You have to calculate the ratio of Coulomb force to that of ratio of gravitational force that you have to calculate. Okay, and I am giving you that answer also. You will basically get four point one into ten to the power forty two. Okay, so you have two. Uh, you have electron positron. They are separated by distance of r. So you have to calculate the ratio of Coulombic force to that of gravitational force. So it will be of the order of 4.1 into 10 to the power 42. So you have to do this homework. Okay. So you should Sir. leave here. Yes. You should leave here, okay. You have a class, Thank right? You, Thank you, sir. No, sir.